By the end of the 19th century, the gospel had reached the coastlands of Africa, but there are vast, uncharted and unreached inlands beyond, where millions know nothing about Jesus Christ. When Peter Cameron Scott, a young British man, visits the tomb of David Livingston in Westminster Abbey, he reads the inscription, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also. He feels the Holy Spirit stirring in his heart and accepts the call to go to the inlands of Africa. On August the 17th, 1895, AIM's first mission party sets off. Scott's idea is to establish a network of mission stations. Stretching into the deserts of Chad, in little more than a year, he establishes four stations, all in Kenya. In 1897, Peter Cameron Scott, along with two other missionaries, falls ill and dies. Several others decide to leave, and three of the stations are closed because of famine. There is one missionary left in Africa. The faithful prayers of that missionary and AIM supporters lead to more missionaries joining the field in 1901. A station is established in Kijabi, which becomes AIM's headquarters in Africa. Eight years later, a school for missionary children is established at Kijabi, called Rift Valley Academy. AIM missionaries also venture beyond Kenya, beginning work in NASA, Tanzania. Expansion continues throughout the early 1900s, with missionaries continuing to follow Scott's model, going into unreached areas of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the inlands of Kenya. By 1917, AIM has 164 missionaries in 30 locations. In 1918, a group of AIM missionaries on their way to DR Congo are forced by sickness to rest in Uganda. This enforced break leads to the beginning of AIM ministry there. By 1924, AIM's bases extend as far as the Central African Republic. Though the spread of the gospel into Africa's inland slows between the 1920s and 1945 due to the two world wars, in Kenya, 58 churches are planted in the 1930s, 108 in the 1940s, and 243 in the 1950s. In the 1940s, 93% of these were planted by African church planters assisting a missionary or by Africans on their own. In 1943, the Africa Inland Church is formally established, giving Africans more leadership responsibility and acknowledging their role in the growth of the church. In 1949, AIM are invited to work with the Church Mission Society in what was then Southeast Sudan. This work is curtailed 14 years later when a government decree and civil unrest forces all missionaries to leave Sudan. A new phase of missionary travel starts in 1970 with the establishment of AIM Air, enabling more affordable air travel. During the 1970s, AIM's desire to reach more people groups with the gospel prompts the leadership to attempt ministry in Mozambique. Prevented from entering by the Marxist government there, work instead begins in the Indian Ocean Islands and Madagascar. Meanwhile in Kenya, the Africa Inland Church is handed over to national leadership, with AIM missionaries now serving the church. Ministry in Namibia starts in 1980 and missionaries are finally allowed into Mozambique in 1985. They arrive to find that through the war and communist years, the gospel has been quietly spread by Mozambican evangelists. Ben and Winston Webster cross into Chad in 1987 and start ministry at Ba'ili near the River Kari. This move marks the completion of Scott's original strategy a line of AIM bases reaching from the coast of Africa into the inland of the continent. His vision of reaching those not yet reached by the gospel continues among the highlands of Lesotho in the early 1990s. The noughties lead to further development with missionaries returning to Sudan following peace agreements, beginning to serve the church as it rebuilds in Rwanda and starting to minister in the north of the continent. The move to the north begins a new challenge of sharing the gospel in locations where missionaries are not welcomed by local government. With 651 
of the remaining 1,000 people groups waiting to hear the good news of Jesus located in North Africa. This move is necessary to effectively respond to God's call on AIM. 2016 marks a significant development in AIM's history with the launch of Vision 2020. Crystallising once again AIM's desire to reach unreached people groups with the gospel and to be a part of catalyzing the African Church to mission. As part of Vision 2020, a diaspora region is opened, recognizing the movement of Africans around the world. AIM also develops the Mobilization Hub, which seeks to work in partnership with African churches and other organizations to provide services that will help mobilize more African missionaries. As we look to the future, God's call remains for AIM to go to the unreached. Currently, Francophone West Africa has few Christians, small numbers of churches and large numbers of mainly Muslim people groups. Many people in those countries will live and die without ever hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Will you go to them?